pre-season guys to set yourself up for a decent hunt in the fall we can do is uh, get back to your spot that you're going to be hunting in throw some of the salt out some of this biologic salt it's uh, bio rock it's great stuff you can also pick up these the uh, blue rocks at your local MNR feed and seed spot all it is is just cow salt my cameraman would stay out of the bush <laughs> be good um, it's just uh, salt for deer uh, for cattle I use it for deer in my backpack I've got a jug of of stuff that we'll use to put on it that'll attract the deer a little bit more but it's basically all the same stuff so something to keep in mind when you're going into the bush carrying all this stuff is you got to make sure that all your body's sprayed down scent free because you're walking into the area that you're going to be hunting in right so the closer you get to that hunting date the more scent free you want to become the other thing too wearing long pants because we're walking through uh poison ivy as well as ticks so you want to make sure that you got your permethrin on so with that being said just make sure you're fully clothed keeps the mosquitoes off you keeps the ticks off poison ivy off keeps your scent free don't leave your scent behind so you can sneak in sneak out and drop what you're feeding in there and uh, place your cameras and away you go we'll show you how what we do to set up our cameras as well as the placement pre-planning for the fall so that you know where you're going to put your blinds or your tree stands that way you're set up properly to be able to harvest that that deer of choice Often after you set up your camera you get it on the tree you're gonna to need to position it so that it's facing towards where your bait pile is and often because of the way trees are growing and they get bigger at the bottom and get narrower at the top often your pictures tend to be pointing up towards the sky so find yourself an old branch in the ground break it off just pull the camera out just a little bit and get it behind and as you place it behind it's gonna reposition it down Another thing to keep in mind is you want to deal with all of your camera stuff prior to going over and setting up your bait pile, especially if you're dealing with things that are that have got a lot of smell to it. Most of the stuff we had today is all in containers other than the salt mineral block itself. Everything else we didn't touch. But if you're in here and you're trying to open up a bag of say molasses uh, coated corn and you get in there and you're trying to pull some out, whatever the case may be, then you come back over here and touch your camera. If you've got bears in the area, they're gonna come over and they're gonna check out your camera because it's also got the same scent that they've just finished up feeding on and they're looking for more. So what'll happen is they'll come over and they're gonna play with the camera, possibly chew it, or even rip it right off and carry it away or smash or break it. Make sure you got your memory card in there and you're gonna to wanna to set it. The most uh, settings have a test function. So you can go and you place the test and you go out you close your lid so that it's in operating fashion. So making sure that your test light is going to show through. Once it's on test, you walk out and you make motion and a green light should come on, indicating that it's picking up in the area that you want to. And what you want to do is try and find that frame on both sides to make sure it's going to fully capture the area. So now what you'd want to do is make sure that your date and all those other functions on your camera are good and then switch it over to the what I like to do is just still pictures that way the camera lasts longer some people like to run videos it's your preference whatever you're going to be able to do the least amount of times you come in and disturb an area the better the more comfortable the deer will be so just remember that that you've got a I've got a 16 gig card in there it's going to take thousands of pictures on batteries that are going to last all summer that big block is going to last all summer now as well that's why I like using it it can rain all day every day for the next two months till we get in here hunting and that block will still probably be present when we're hunting in october and november 
What would also be good is coming in and just refreshing the, the scent. So that uh, deer jam that I had poured on there, that'll get the aroma out as well as get the deer a little more attracted. This is a main corridor. We've, we've done some research about it. We know the deer like to travel through here, especially across that back section that come in from the back as well. So we know the deer are moving in through around here. And last year we had this set up and the deer were coming to it day in and day out, right through till the end of December. So we know that the deer aren't gonna take much to draw back in. And then in about a month's time, I'm gonna set my blind up just behind where we're positioned right now. That way that the deer get used to the blind as well as have the additional scent for them. The stump keeps the minerals up off the ground. And as it rains, the salt's gonna get onto the, the tree stump and they'll be able to still lick the sides of the tree and get to the bark as well as any of the stuff that goes down in the ground. Eventually over the course of a couple of years of hunting here, they're gonna have most of this all basically dug right out and, and, and lifted up trying to get to all the minerals that have washed into the ground. So basically what I'll do is just to add stuff that was actually manufactured for deer. I'll put a little bit on top here as well, and then I'll put a little bit on the ground. But I like to try and keep most of my minerals up off the ground that way that the deer aren't having to lick the dirt and get right into it. Not that that's going to be harmful to them, but it at least keeps it off the ground. As well as when you're in your tree stand or in your blind, you have that deer in a good posture. Nothing's down out of proportion. So they're in a good anatomical position to be able to shoot at your, uh, your deer and hopefully you'll be able to harvest it without wounding the, the animal. Keep in mind guys is right here is the path we take in typically we have our blind set up just back in here off to the side if you refer to the blind uh, set up and tear down video that I had done you'll see where the blind was positioned this is the same spot so next uh, month in late August to early September I'm gonna be putting the blind back in that corner and we'll use this exact same path all the time to come in to either set up the feed set up the tent to hunt. So that way we've got a short way in and a short way out. Minimalize how much scent you're leaving. So some of this foliage here, you're rubbing up against it, you'll be leaving some scent behind so that if the deer are traveling this corridor and decide they wanna use your footpath, you wanna knock this stuff down and minimize as much as possible. So come in and just squash it down, get it out of the way, that way, even in the late fall, you're not rubbing up against it, making noise. And then even now, you're not leaving any scent. So this way, we've created our path. We'll maintain this a little better. I might do a video on maintaining it. But basically, all you'll be doing is just getting the leaves off the ground, getting all the sticks off, getting all the foliage out of the way. So you can get in and get out super quiet and minimize how much scent you leave behind so that the deer can't detect you when they're doing their natural thing when you're not here. concludes this episode of Talk Hunting and Outdoors. Hope it was informative. If you enjoyed that video, click the like button, click the share, and uh, click that subscribe button if you want more uh, information on hunting. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for our next episode.